Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. It says the circles each have a radius of one. What's the area of the rectangle? This is day 31 of our Agvent calendar. For the month of December, we're gonna solve 31 Katrina Ag puzzles in 31 days. And if you wanna try this one, pause it right now, because I'm gonna solve it in three, two, one. The area of a rectangle is base times height. Each of these diameters is equal to two, so this base is gonna be equal to six. And then we don't know the height, so let's call it h. So the area is gonna be equal to six h. Our goal is to solve for this h. This looks important, let's put a box around it. Next, let's focus right here on this right triangle on the right. Let's find the center of this circle and draw this radius and this radius. We were told that each of the circles have a radius of one, so each of these will be equal to one. And the radius always meets the tangent line at right angles, so this is a right angle and this is a right angle. Let's construct the line going from this center to this vertex. And let's look at these two triangles. These two triangles both have a right angle. They both have these two sides equal to one, and they both share this common side. By the HL theorem, we know these two triangles are congruent. HL theorem says if we have two right triangles with a pair of congruent hypotenuses and one pair of congruent legs, then you know the two triangles are congruent. For this six right here, this distance is one because it's the radius, so we can break this into five and one. So this side of the triangle is equal to five. And because the two triangles are congruent, this side up here is also equal to five. And that corresponds to this up here. So this distance is also equal to five. That's pretty cool. Next, let's extend this all the way up here, and that's gonna be longer than a radius. It's sticking out of the circle a little bit and intersecting up here. Let's call the distance from here to here x, and let's call this red distance y. Once again, y is longer than one. It's longer than that radius. And now we've created a little triangle inside here. It's gonna be a right triangle, because this line is perpendicular to that. Now this triangle will be similar to this one. It's kind of hard to see and explain. Let's pull it out. Let's duplicate the whole thing and focus on this larger triangle here. And this one, let's move it out here. So that's the bigger triangle. And now for this little triangle, let's do the same thing. Let's copy this down here. And then let's focus on the little triangle that we made. Still kind of small. Enhance. So this intersection right here is shared between the two triangles. So let's label that as an orange angle. So this orange angle here is literally the exact same angle as that one there. So they're definitely the same size. And now these are similar. Let's rotate this one. So these are similar triangles. They have two pairs of corresponding angles, which makes the triangles similar. And I've aligned them so their corresponding sides are in the right location. And since the base here is five and the base here is one, we know the scale factor from this triangle to this triangle is five to one. With this information, we can write some equations. Since this base is five times this base, this height, y plus one, will be five times this height, x. So we can write y plus one is equal to five x. And the same thing will happen with the hypotenuse. This x plus five is gonna be five times this y. So we can write x plus five equals five y. So these two equations come from the fact that these two triangles are similar with a similarity ratio of five to one. Pretty cool, huh? And now we have a system of two linear equations with two variables. We are able to solve for those variables. First, let's get this y all by itself. Let's subtract one from both sides. And we end up with y is equal to 5x minus one. And then for this equation, in the place of this y, let's plug in 5x minus one. Next, this five will distribute to both of these terms. So we'll have 25x minus five. And now from here, let's get all the x's to the same side. Let's subtract x from both sides. And then we can move this five to the other side by adding five to both sides. On the left-hand side, these two x's will cancel each other out. And we're left with five plus five, which is 10. And then on the right-hand side, the negative five and positive five will cancel each other out. And 25x minus x is 24x. Next, to get the x by itself, we can divide both sides by 24. And we end up with 10 24ths equals x. And we can simplify 10 24ths to 5 twelfths. And that is the value for x. So let's plug 5 twelfths in for this x. And then 5 times 5 is 25, and that'll still be over 12. That gives us y is equal to 25 twelfths minus 1. In order to combine these two, we need to give them a common denominator. Let's rewrite the 1 as 12 twelfths. And then 25 twelfths minus 12 twelfths is 13 twelfths. 
That is very difficult to say. And now we have the answer to why. It's 13 twelfths. So that means we know this length and this length. And now we think we have enough to solve for h. Let's copy down this right triangle and then this right triangle. These are also similar right triangles. This is a right angle and this is a right angle. And then this angle is shared. Since they have two pairs of congruent angles, they are similar triangles. Let's do a proportion this time. We can do the base divided by the base equals the height divided by the height. We can do five divided by six is equal to y plus one divided by h. And now I'm realizing we didn't need to solve for the x. We only need the y. That's interesting. We could have done this a little bit more efficiently if we went just for the y. I just didn't know we wouldn't need the x. In the place of this y, we're gonna plug in 13 twelfths. So now we have everything we need to solve for this h. Let's clean up all of this and let's move this up here. First, let's add this stuff up here. Let's make this one a 12 twelfths. And we can do 13 twelfths plus 12 twelfths gives us 25 twelfths. And then we can cross multiply. Six times 25 twelfths will be equal to five times h. Let's simplify this side first. The six times 25 over 12 will simplify to 25 halves. That's because this six and the 12 simplified to one half. And then to get this h by itself, we can multiply both sides by one fifth. On this left hand side, the 25 and the five will simplify, leaving us with five halves. And on the right hand side, we just have h. And now we know the height of our rectangle. Let's bring back the rectangle's area formula and let's give ourselves some room. In the place of the h, let's plug in five halves. Then we can simplify the six and the two on bottom, that would become three. And then three times five is 15. Let's give it a label of unit squared and it already has a box. The area of this rectangle is 15 units squared. How exciting. And that is the end of our advent calendar.